Hello and welcome everybody to this Azure Signups Espresso. I'm joined here today by Lilium, which means dedicated secret pools. Today we've got a treat for you. We've talked about hash distributed tables. We've talked about round robin distributed tables. Today we're talking about replicated tables. Lilium, isn't that right? Yes, that's correct. <laughs> okay, perfect. And for replicated tables, we've got another special treat for you because we know this guy that really knows a lot about these replicated tables and we've invited him as a guest today. So, uh, Luca, can you introduce yourself, please? Hey, hello, team. So, so I'm Luca from the FTA team. I work with Stan and Lilium, and my main focus is on uh, Synapse and the ticketing pool, and that's all. Okay, great. So, first question: uh, What is a dead? Oh, sorry, what is dedicated pool? Well, no, what is a replicated table? Okay, so I will answer that one. <laughs> so replicated tables are tables that are going to be replicated across all the computed nodes. So we know now that dedicated tables use distributed architecture, right? And when we create a table using a pattern as replicated, the, all the data of that table will be replicated against all the computed nodes. Okay, cool. Okay. So that basically <laughs> means that we, we don't get one table, we basically get X amount of the table, X amount of the data for that specific table, right? Yes. We have multiple copy of the table, okay, one cool. for each compute node. Okay. And that's important because the table cannot be very big, right? Otherwise, imagine you replicate a very big table. So the documentation says that threshold is two gigabytes. Okay, so we cannot use it for every table, right? If, of course, what I would think, if I would think logically, I want to have my data on every node so everything can happen locally. So just replicating all tables is not a good idea. Are this, what are the limitations? What are the, the choice patterns when you choose these replicated tables? What are the things you need to think about? Well, a good one would be dimensions, right? The dimensions, they should not be very large. So that's a good one. Mm -hmm. Yes, basically we advice to use a replicated table for dimension table that do not exceed the uh, two gigabyte threshold okay. because otherwise it will take longer to create the cache on each compute node okay and so basically um the cache you just talked about like um so if you query a replicated table will it be already be replicated across all those nodes or how does that happen internally well, the very first query will incur, will incur in data movement. Basically, uh, the engine will need to broadcast move the entire, um, the entire set of data uh, for each, uh, comp on each compute node to create the cache. So the very first query will incur in the data movement. But all other query will uh, benefit from the uh, cache and uh, will not incur in any kind of broadcast move or shuffle move or whatever move you want. Okay, so basically the first time we query it, it, it makes that cache. Um, but let's say I've got a lot of update inserts and deletes happening against that table. What happens to that cache? The cache will be invalidated. So basically, whenever you write your replicated table, uh, you have to retrain the cache. So it is a very important thing you have to take care of. Okay, so this basically means it's good for dimension tables, smaller tables, not tables that have frequent inserts and updates. Um, definitely not a fit for your fact tables because that will cause it to re to replicate too much data across those nodes. And it also might have more frequent updates and inserts, which would then of course incur the issue that it will keep replicating that data and you won't actually benefit from that cache. But we like to show you how that stuff is done. And I think Luca, you've got a demo for us, right? Yeah, I have a demo. Here I have one of my replicated table, the DIM product, and to define it as a replicated one, you just need to specify distribution equal replicate. And here I have my select, which is joining my fact internet sales. Fact internet sales have been defined as a um, distributed table, uh, distributed hash, and I'm going to join it with multiple dimension table. And for all of them, the cache is not ready yet. So I'm just going to basically run this select and just checking its execution plan. And the execution plan, as you can see, will need to move data to generate the cache for each, uh, for each table, for each replicated table. And the query completed in about six seconds. Now I'm going to rerun the same query, basically the same query, 
and it should benefit from the replicated table cache. And here we have it plan and as you can see it does not need to move around data to create the cache it only use the return operation it means that every node have been able to resolve or to resolve the um, the join without asking data from other nodes or other distribution and the query completed faster than the previous one and used less resources Luca let me make a question um, so after doing so you have your dimension table and you run that process uh, every night and don't know to do insert the date the needs so after that is done it makes sense to do a just a select to make a select across this um, um, against this table to avoid the data movement during the business hours yes sure it makes sense uh, and okay. uh, you only need, need a se select top one to trigger the, the cache creation. Awesome. So this basically means that for very complex queries where we have uh, multiple joins to dimension tables, replicated tables can really, really help to improve that performance. Now, remember, there's a few rules of engagement. So the first rule is it cannot be larger than two gigabytes. It can be, but in most cases, more than two gigabytes is usually not the best thing to replicate across all those nodes. Um, the second rule of engagement is don't do it on the table that you're frequently inserting, updating and deleting because you will invalidate that cache. Uh, one big tip that uh, Luca gave us as well is basically says that um, if we're going to do uh, a nightly load and we're going to insert, update, and delete data, it might be good to do a select top one star from that specific table to just get that cache ready and your users will benefit from, from this during the whole day. Um, if this was the first time you're visiting our channel and you've liked the content, uh, just hit that subscribe button. Um, if you liked our video, give us a big thumbs up. And if you have any questions or you want to see any other subject ta tackled, just write them in the comments and we'll definitely get back to you. As always, from the Synapse Special Team, this is Stan. Ilya. Luca. Thank you very much for watching. Bye. Bye-bye.